thank you for going through the first part of the training. I do hope you are enjoying the training. If you have a question at the end of the last module or the last lesson, you'll be able to see the number that you can reserve and be able to have answers to your question. So let's go. CCDB TP marketing algorithm and its application. Now, CCDB TP was created or invented or enunciated or propounded by Professor Flip Kotler. Flip Kotler believes that the best advertisement constitutes satisfied customers and clients. And as far as he's concerned, if you want, if you want to have satisfied customers, you must understand CCDV TP. Now C stands for creating. The next C stands for communicating. The D stands for delivering. The V stands for value. The T stands for targeted market. The P stands for profit. So if you really want to be a good marketer, you must understand how to create, how to communicate and deliver value to targeted market while making profit. So let's look at them one by one. A lot of people don't know how to create value. They just run around anything that is booming or anything neighbors are doing or computer had gone into, they don't have their brand, they don't have something that distinguishes them from every other person doing the something that they are doing. They don't have unique value that they are proposing. They don't have the gift that they are giving to the people who are coming to their businesses. So how do you know what to create? Look around you, and then look at your capacity. When you look around you, the only way and major logical way you have revelation regarding your business is to find out all the questions that are being asked around you. For instance, every problem you see is a question that is demanding for answer. The same for every solution you see is an answer that came in response to what? To a particular question, which is the problem. I'm gonna repeat this because for me, it's profound and I've lived my life according with that. And because of that, I don't complain. Why? I know that I don't need to complain. My friends don't need it. I don't need to explain. My enemies will not even believe me. Like I told you, I'm disabled in my lower limbs. So if I keep complaining, why I don't have a PhD? It's because of my disability. Who will believe me? If I keep complaining, why I'm not rich? It's because of my disability. Who, who will believe me? Yes, so I decided, don't complain. Your friends don't need it. Don't explain. Your enemies, they don't, they won't even believe you. So look around you and see all those problems and see them as questions asking for what? Questions that are looking for answers and the answers are what you are gonna to come to your organization and create the solution. So creating solution is at the realm of production management. How do you produce what has market fits? If you are producing just to make money, you will never be rich. But if you are producing to solve problem, you will always be rich. The baker is not there because he loves the eater of the bread. Neither does the bread eater go to the baker because he loves the baker, but because the baker is given services that the consumer or the buyer wants. That's why, that's where they meet. So creating products, creating services, creating platforms, and it's very important you underline platforms. Everything is not a physical product. 
So you must understand the concept of products, services, and platforms. If you are creating products, something that people can touch, feel, or be able to exchange in a tangible form, services, when you are using your skills or when you are solving problems that may not require very serious physical input in terms of, or you are bringing um, bread or something like that. And when we talk about platform, it's creating a place where you are bringing those who want to buy and those who want to sell together, for instance. Those who want to marry and those who are looking for spouses together. Those who want to you know, ride and those who have cars together. Those who want to, what well, is anything, any platform, those who want to sell, those who want to buy, like exhibition, um, trade fair, is, is a platform, yes? But we always talk about, you know, making your platform to be online because it's easier, it's better, you know, and it's um, simpler. It, it will be very important I tell you something about leverage at this moment. Now, leverage is something that if you don't understand it, you're going to suffer for a long time. If you don't understand leverage, you are going to suffer for a long time. So what is leverage? Leverage has to do with being able to use an existing platform, capital, service, relationship, or world to reduce your own level and move faster in what you have decided to do. Level is leverage when a lot of people are working for you. That's leverage. So what you would have produced one, maybe 100 people are working for you, so you have it times 100. That's leverage. Well, leverage has its own problem. Remember what I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you platform, okay? Leverage has its own problems because at the end of the day, uh, sorry, um, not leverage, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Lebo has its own issues because at the end of the day, you command and you not command, you actually have to manage a lot of people. Then the next leverage is capital. Those who have capital have leverage. In our own organization, we define capital as anything you can capitalize on. So don't see it as money alone. But let's talk about it here as money. So if you have money, you can buy into a business, you can give somebody money to trade for you, you can invest in a company, you can buy stocks, you can, you know, quite a lot you can do. Yes, with money, with capital. Okay. Now, you can even get people, open a business and people come work for you in that business, so capital. So capital is not something every one of us, um, not all of us have capital, so it's still scarce. It has some problem, it has a price to it. There's a thought leverage that 21st century and computer and internet brought into existence. That capital is what we call the production of goods and services and products and platform of which the replication of it and the continuous sales or, or sell of it does not add to the marginal cost. For instance, this training you are listening to, I did it only once and people will continue to buy and people have bought and they're still buying and buying and buying. So that's a, a leverage. 
and this leverage, one of its major characteristics, I brought out 11 characteristics of this leverage, but you can find it in another of my training. But one of the major leverage of this particular, uh, major characteristics of this particular leverage is permissionlessness. Permissionlessness is you don't need anybody's permission to do this recording and put it out there for people to buy. You don't need anybody's permission. Yes, whether you want to record it on Zoom or you want to record it, Zoom has for five minutes uh, or 40 minutes uh, free. Whether you want to record it with um, a screen customatic, whether you want to record it with vid, or you know, you don't need anybody's permission. Or Fumora, you know, you don't need anybody's permission. If you want to put it on Facebook free, if you want to put it on um, Flutter Wave and put a link so where, you, where people can pay, of stuff, nobody can stop you. If you want to put it on um, Vimeo, nobody can stop you. Because you don't need permission. Yes? So if you don't understand this thought leverage, there's a problem because you're going to suffer and suffer and keep suffering all day long. So you must understand this. But back to what we were discussing. Yes, I was carried away, but I, I believe you, if you learned this, you would have learned a lot. That's what we are, you know, working on. In understanding how to create products, services, and platforms, you must make sure you listen to what we said, I think in the, in the first part of this training, where we talked about marketing 101. Yes, you need to revisit it and actually understand what is said there. So creating is about production management. Then a lot of people produce, including you taking this course. You have a lot of things you produce. You have a lot of things you can do. You have a lot of courses you can teach. You have a lot of products you have in your head. You have a lot of skills you can sell. You have a lot of things your company is doing or companies are doing. But you see, the marketing side is the problem. Yes? So you always accomplish... Um, the supply side, is it what we call it? Yes, supply side, you you, you just get it um, produced, yes? But, you know, making sure you go ahead to making sure that people buy it, you start dragging your feet. Now, if there's any demon or any devil that is responsible for this, it is you, not something external to you. And sometimes that is why you need coaching. You know, you need mentorship. Somebody who will hold you accountable and push you. So the second one, which is the second C, is communicate. When you produce, communicate it, push it out there. Communication is about brand management. The first one creating is about production management. The second one is about brand management. Your marketing, your advertising, your marketing communications, everything you do to make sure that you are seen by the people who you want to buy from you at a premium price. You can't always scratch with a chicken. Yes, sometimes you need to say enough of this scratching with the chickens. I want to fly with the eagle. A time came in my career where I decided I want to work for only government. Because when I work for government, I find out that what I get in one government job is more than what I get in lots of individual clients who come and disturb me. And you know, that doesn't mean we don't work for individuals anymore. But we do more of that. When I go to Dr. Carl, when I go to the bonus um, slide, of course, I'll be able to explain that. So communicate, how do you communicate? By deciding who you want to sell to and making sure you do everything to be where they can see you and be able to make decision to buy from you. However you want to do that, but be like what they will want to buy. Be like what they will want to buy because they may be willing, but they are not able, meaning they are poor. You're marketing the poor people. They may be willing, but they are 
rather, but they may be willing, but they're not able to market the poor people. They may be able, but they're not willing. They are rich enough to buy, but you don't look like who they want to buy from. You don't look like who they want to do business with. So don't joke with your branding. Don't joke with your personality. Don't joke with how you look. Yes, you must look the part, okay? So create, communicate, and deliver. Create, communicate. So creating production management or product management, communicating brand management, delivering supply chain management, your process that when you've communicated, or rather when you've created and communicated and people are interested in buying, that delivery to them will be easy for you because by the process of your communication and creating, immediately they're interested, they know what next action. Either they click here or they book or they call or they fill a form or they, you know, walk into a particular place or somebody goes to see them or they are tied to a customer service officer, whatever it is, you must have a process that is that makes it easy for your customers to buy from you. So deliver value. Remember, it must be value. It must be value. If it is not value, you are not helping yourself. In fact, what I encourage everybody is that for every company you start, for every product you start, give it first 100 years of existence. Because really, the purpose of business is profitable sustainability and sustainable profitability. Well, you may want to go look for my you know, introduction to HR and capacity maximization costs and, and pick it up to understand the purpose of business, how it helps you to through your vision, your mission, and it helps you to find the people who are gonna work for you from the job title to the job descriptions to the qualities you want in them, qualification and experiences you think they should have. So finding the key perform performance indicators of your staff and the standard operating procedure for the job you are giving them, understanding how you allocate your task, how you um, coordinate the tasks you've given to them, how you supervise it, how you do evaluation so that there won't be loopholes. Whenever there's loophole, it won't take you two, three months, six months, one, um, you know, maybe some one week, you are able to find it and block it. So delivering value means that your supply chain management has to be good, has to be nice, has to be powerful, yes? And the value you are given is something that the market wants. Now, the T stands for targeted. Yeah, a lot of people want to say, who is your, who is your customer? They'll say something like, eh, everybody can use it. Everybody can buy. Everybody is not a target market. Everybody is not a target market. If you go to the market, everybody may use salt, but you see, there are some salt that are costlier, some are packaged, some are just in the open bag. You just say, Madam, put for me and she'll put for you. So targeted market means that you are going to zero in into the people who you can do business with happily and who can do business with you happily. So your ability to understand your targeted market will help you not to waste your marketing budget. So how do you know your targeted market? Number one, your targeted market must have the need or the want. In other words, the problem they have must have a connection and a fit with the solution you have. That's number one. Number two, they must have the urgency, meaning that if they have a problem that they want to solve in 20 years time, there's no need marketing them because you market them now, you spend your marketing budget, next 20 years, they may find another person 
who will um, solve that problem for them. So you need to make them know you can solve the problem, but don't go spend your money trying to acquire them because they don't have urgency at the moment. Number three, so I've mentioned they must have the needs and want. Number two, I've mentioned that they must have the urgency, they want it solved now, now, or at least in the nearest future. Number three, they must have the finance. A lot of people have serious problems that they want solutions to. For instance, a lot of people have health problems. They're suffering from cancer, they're suffering from all kinds of diseases, they need surgery. But you see, because they don't have the money. Yes, they don't have the money because for everything that is bought or sold here on earth, somebody must pay for it. Either United Nations systems pay for it, or you know, international development organizations pay for it, or you know, donors and volunteers pay for it, or somebody must pay for that. Or your father, your mother, or yourself pay for it, or your company pay for it, or you know, so really they must have the finance. If they don't have the finance and you keep working with them free, you keep giving your rights free, your medical treatment free as a doctor and all those, you may wake up one morning, you can't pay the rent, you can't pay your staff members, you can't pay yourself, you can't solve your problems, you can't pay the public bills, you can't, you know, you can't do anything. So that is why you must target those who have the finance to pay. That doesn't mean you can't have the charity arm of your organization. We are maybe 10% of the money you make goes into a particular post that helps to give some people free medical treatment. So targeting the right people who have the need and want, who have the urgency, who have the finance, it's very important. So that's how you know the targeted market. And the fourth thing there is that they must have the time or the interest to listen to you. They must have the interest to listen to you. If you have a solution and somebody cannot listen to you, he can't listen to you through newspapers, he can't listen to you, that's uh, print media, he can't listen to you through electronic media, he can't listen to you online. He can't listen to you offline. He can't, you know, receive you at all. He can't even listen to know whether he can solve his problem or her problem or the organization's problem. That, that means there's no way he can sell to the person. So the fault is that the person must be willing to listen to you or the organization must be willing to listen to you. And the fifth one is that they must trust you enough. They must trust you enough that you are able to solve their problem. Because if they don't, they won't release their money. So I do hope that you understand the application of CCDVTP by Professor Philip Kotler. You need to create, communicate, and deliver value to the targeted market while making profit. So if you've got that, yes, let's talk about the seven piece of marketing and the application. If you want to sell, there are internal things you must do. Remember, we are talking about proactive marketing, where you are able to understand how to sit down and do your research and be able to go to the market from a measured step perspective. We are whoever you are talking to, you have a higher capacity to convert because you have researched this person and you found out that the person has the need I found that how you can talk to this person and the person will listen to you and you've been able to find out what price the person is willing and able to pay. So you need to understand the seven piece of marketing. Number one is product. Your product is your ambassador. And that is why don't produce just because you want to make money. Produce because you want to have a sustainable business that is profitably sustainable and sustainably profitable. Your product is your ambassador. Don't do, don't do wishy-washy job. Do something strong. Whether you are a skilled person or you're selling physical product, do something that people can have and say, who did this? It starts from 
having a worth, a self-worth, and understanding that value can never be outdated. Number two is place. Accessibility to the customers via distribution channel is very important. Today, you can sell from your house, but if you are selling from your house, make sure you are using the online platforms to do what? To do quite a lot, a lot of marketing, okay? So accessibility to the customer via distribution channels. A lot of women are on Instagram, a lot of women are on TikTok, a lot of children are on TikTok, I mean youths, a lot of people are on Facebook, over 2.5 billion people are on Facebook and it's still growing. A lot of people are on WhatsApp. Don't joke with these places. Yes, but also in our own organization, because we are a consulting firm, we consult for governments. In every city we are, we are in the state capital and we are not far away from the government house or the federal secretary. Why? Because the commissioners, the ministers, the SAs and all those, they may need to visit us and we may need to visit them. So we don't want to be out scared where they drive for five minutes to see us. We want to see the possibility of making it seven minutes, five, seven minutes at most, 15 minutes drive, but five, seven minutes is always our target whenever we are checking to you know, pick a location because of the kind of thing we do. So the same for you. Find out if you are selling something that a lot of people buy, maybe food and other, there's no need coming to stay near to the government house. You can stay in the outskirts where people are many. For instance, in Abuja, you, you can go to Kubwa. Yes, if what you say, what you, you are selling, need you know, people to just buy and patronize. So maybe you're selling food stuff and other. The people who come to market, or rather who come to their offices in um in a Wuse market in the in the city center uh, no in the capital because city center in Belgium would mean another thing from that in, in, in Netherlands um when you compare to Nigeria. I mean those who come to work they don't want to carry bags of rice while going home. They want to buy bags of rice closer to their houses and a lot of them in cities like where I live now, a lot of them, because of the cost of accommodation inside the city, at the heart of the city, they live at the suburb because that is where they can buy land and build land and build houses. And it is also where they are able to have capacity to rent houses. So understand the difference. If you're a consulting firm, you're a branding company, you are this one, so you know where to be. If you are selling some kind of thing, you also know where to be. If you are a class restaurant, oh, you need to be at the heart of the city because the people at the um, suburbs may not be able to buy what you are selling. So if you're gonna have there, you should have a branch so that you don't have issues with patronage. The next thing is um, pricing. Pricing should be low enough. Now low is, uh, subjective or should I say law here is um, conditioned upon or conditional to who we are talking about. The price should be low enough to attract um, customers and high enough to yield profit. Don't go and price too high away from what you are what your competitors are pricing. Yes, you must be able to set your prices so that it is competitive, so that you don't shoot yourself, yourself on the leg. Unless you are selling a luxury item and you know that you have a class that you're looking for, I want to use what we call here FEZ to drag and um, draw people to yourself. That is okay. You just, you are up there as high end, they have no option than to come and buy. But if it is something that has a lot of competitors at that lower end, the same thing, it doesn't have, it's not as if 
there's any value addition to it, don't go sell too higher than your competitors. Remember also pricing um, is determined by location. Now, know what your competitors are pricing and be able to know the value you are adding that will make you price higher or have a distinctive pricing. Time will tell, tell me to talk about pricing here because this is not certain prices workshop. Number four is promotion. What you do to attract more customers, what you do to make the customers know that they don't have option than to buy from you. So, so many you can do, but we're gonna revisit these seven piece. Yeah, I think in the third module or so, so that you are able to have, um, you know, we're gonna treat them, you know, more. But remember, in all these things we're talking about, the customer is the main person. So you must always think about him. People, people include target market plus excellent customer service. Without people, visions perish. Without vision, people perish. So without people, products perish. Without products, people may never get satisfied. So you must strike a balance. But you see, that target market must have excellent customer, uh, rather excellent customer service people attending to them. Don't feel that they don't matter. The only person or only people that can suck from the chairman of the board of the company to the gates man or whoever or cleaner in the company is the customer by just deciding to do a very simple thing, going elsewhere to spend his or her money. You must understand that and be able to know that excellent customer service, customer amazement is not an option. So the sixth P is process. Now this six and seven is very important when you are selling something intangible, when you are selling like consulting services, when you are selling digital products, when you are selling some kind of thing, yes, mentorship and coaching and all those, yes, you need to have a process. That doesn't mean it just not apply to other people. The process answers to the question of how efficient is the process of delivering your products to the, cost, the consumer or the customer. Now, when somebody had paid you, that payment should activate a particular response that will help you, that will help you to have, that will help you to have people who will call, attend to, make sure they answer to the people who had made payment. And make sure also that the process of buying it, making payments, or getting information. It's not too arduous. It's not, make it, lighten it. If it's payment, people can pay with USSD code. They can pay with QR. They can pay um, with um, money transfer. They can pay with a mobile wallet. They can pay with, you know, all kinds of payment channels should be there. They can pay with PayPal, Stripe. They can pay with Pluto, Wave, Paystack. They can pay with CUDA, they can, you know, any way they can do back transfer and all those. Yes, the process should be easy. And you need to map that process from the pitching to delivery of the product and to the customer service and after sales. You must map a product that goes from the beginning to the end of the spectrum. But then the seventh one is the physical evidence. What are the proofs? that your business is real and in existence. So social proofs, yeah, what people have said about you, your receipts, um, your websites, your testimonials, people who had bought from you before, a referral, and all those kind of things, they are evidence, your address, okay? They are all evidences that, you know, this thing exists, this thing has been there, um, Maybe your CAC certificate and um, awards you people had won before on customer excellence, reviews online, independent reviews that people are doing about you online. Those are all physical evidence that really this business exists. Okay. So if you've got that, let's talk about 
a very important aspect of this training. That is designing practical marketing strategy. Now, in order to design practical marketing strategy, you, you need to understand the seven P's. And I think we'll, we'll go through it again um, later in the, in the next um, you know, model. We'll go through it again in this lesson. But now, having seen what it is, you are going to use that to now design your practical marketing strategy. So you're going to zero in and say, what are we specializing on? What, what, are, what is our company known for? Yes, don't be too broad that people don't know what you are doing actually. Okay, so you are selling um, fufu, uh, what, what, what Nigerians call fufu, you know, that is um, processed cassava. Um, but in the non-package way, you are doing training, you are selling motor spare parts, you are, and you are doing that in the same place, undifferentiated, okay? So people will not know what you are known for. If you look around, you know, the world, whether you are looking at Kim Kardashian, you are looking at Kylie Jenner, you are looking at um, the video, you're looking at the whiskey, they're looking at um, um, the preachers of the gospel or, you know, clerics you are looking, whatever you are looking at, a lot of them are authors and this one are their own big businesses, but you know them practically for one thing. Maybe you know them as musicians, or you know them as clerics, or you know them as trainers, or you know them as whatever. So don't be so, so, you know, eclectic that people are just wondering, what are you doing? Now, that doesn't mean you can have a lot of your companies, yes? You can have a lot of your companies, you know, but it's going to be divided in such a way that though your company could be a group of companies, but every other brand inside the company is well differentiated and it's on its own that people know oh, they are into this, okay? Now, if you've got that, that specialization will help people know this is what you are best at. And when they think of that particular thing, they come to you. We have a lot of companies. We have a um, real estate company. We have um, a recruitment company. We have a business school, we have um, um, agri-tech company, we have, um, you know, property company. Yes, but I have built my life that people know me as a trainer, consultant, mentor, you see. So let there be something people know your company for. And, you know, that's a major thing for us as subsumed inside. Don't uh, push them the same way with the same logo, with the same staff in such a way that people start getting confused. What do you really do? That specialization. It will help you to know also what you want to be in the marketplace. So that leads us to differentiation. That thing you are specializing in, remember, you are not the only person who is doing that thing you are specializing in, you are not the only person doing that. So what does that mean? What it means is that you need to differentiate yourself in such a way that you are going to be well differentiated and well packaged that when people are looking for maybe a hard analgesic, they're going to be looking for Brewstan N, Ibuprofen. But when they're looking for the mild ones, oh, they're going to be looking at, um, you know, some of this other one. Yeah. So with this simple paracetamol that, you know, I don't want to start mentioning brands. Okay. So, so differentiation 
It's the ability to say, this is what makes us different from every other person doing the something we are doing. As a business school, we are differentiated in that we say, we give you facts you can use. We're not very interested in the academic part of that, in the grammar part. We're interested in how can somebody, whether you're educated or not educated, be able to take the action nuggets of these trainings and go out there and apply them and get results without looking at all the graphs and understanding all the algorithms. That's what differentiates us from every other person doing the same thing we are doing. You know, we talk, we call it a um, street smart strategy. What are some of those things that you can go ahead and start applying immediately? So that's differentiation. Yeah, this differentiation will help you to know who you are working for and who you are interested to do business with. And that leads us to what? Segmentation. You should be able to say, this is the people I do what? I cater for. For instance, you've had things like celebrity chef, celebrity um, barber, celebrity artist, celebrity what? Comedian. You, you've had those. They've segmented and said, these are the people we want to serve. We want to serve celebrity. We want to serve big people. We're not interested in selling to, you know, the, you know, masses, the lower people in the society. So that segmentation, for instance, you go to some hotels. Yeah. Not everybody can afford to sleep at night there. In fact, most people in that city, they are one night. I mean, the hotels one night is more than their two months salary. Somebody, before I came into this class, somebody was just writing me and said that, um, um, that, you know, she was pricing something and they just to come for me to train her for, you know, few things. And the, the pricing the company gave her was 250,000 to meet Dr. Kali and take some, a few trainings um, for a few hours. And she, she wrote me and said, but this is more than three months of my salary. 250,000 is more than three months of my salary. I said, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> you are my friend. But you know, the latter mood, this is less than my one day earning. So even having that time to attend to you is something I think I'm considering because you are a friend. So going anything lower than that cannot work because we've segmented who we want to work with and for. Instead, we can give her a recorded version to go out and listen and be free instead of doing what? Going below our time, our, sorry, our um, market segments. A segmentation also means that you've decided and segmented those your value can help and those who appreciate your value. Now, in business success modeling, I always say that when you have a value that you are proposing, those your value, those your value can help, they are called customer segments. And those who can help your value, they are called um, key partners. So knowing those your value can help and who can appreciate that you that what you're bringing to them is of value is what we call customer segments. Okay. Now, when you've segmented, whether you're doing for the rich or you have product for you know, the lower class people, it's very important to note what is higher, or what we call heli and lehi. High energy, low income. I'll talk about it later. And low energy, high income. High energy, low income, heli, H-E-L-I, high energy, low income, or L-E-H-I, low energy, high income. High energy, low income are you know, those things you do and um, you know the re re reward is not the profit is not like you know what you want to continue. Yeah, but it's okay, it's good. You can keep the business running. But low energy, high income is when you grow your business to a level. Yes. Oh, somebody walks in and pay you fifty thousand dollars for mentorship, and pay you hundred thousand dollars for mentorship. That is what. Lehi, low energy, 
high income. And these people, when you talk to them, they don't give you trouble, okay? So if they are, um, if they are mentees, yeah, you, know, you, you just tell them, oh, go do this and that. They say, yes, sir, and they go do that. And then it works for them and they rake in billions. I have one of my clients is a billionaire like that. I don't waste time. I say, do this, do that, do that. He just goes and do them. And then he, he makes all the money. I, I just told him two years ago, establish um, your city, establish a very, very big um, real estate company. And he did. And since then, you know, he's got him so busy and he's enjoying his life because in the other business he is in, has come to the apex of it. So he was even getting depressed, though he has a lot of money, but was feeling that what am I even doing here? Nothing, nothing is challenging again. He's one guy who loves challenges. If he's not challenging, he starts getting depressed. So that's segmentation. There we have concentration. When you've segmented, when you specialize, differentiated, segmented, you need to concentrate and build it over time. Don't just do it for one week, two weeks, one month, three months. And you run away. No, that is not right. Do it for a long time and be able to make a name for yourself there. They say a rolling stone that has no moss. So you need to be a stone that is there, you know, trying to do something somewhere and staying long enough you will prosper in that. Very quickly, let's talk about understanding and applying sales funnel. You see, in marketing and sales, you must understand all the process or processes that gets people from knowing about you and your product to paying and getting the service. So I call it IDA plus R squared that's what your marketing your sales funnel should look like so you see like funnel when you start making sure that people hear about what you are doing that's what we call awareness and awareness is a function of showing up and putting yourself out there if you have the best of product and nobody knows about it you can never be rich because they won't be aware that you can solve their problem. So awareness has to do with all the marketing and advertising and PR and everything you do, putting yourself out there so that people can know that you have this or that, or you can do this, or you can do that, or you have this or that platform. Now, awareness is a very vital part of your sales funnel. Because if you have not algorithmized your awareness, you will not understand what effort to put in. If you have something like six people come for your training, six people buy your car, six people walk into your restaurant. Now you need to now look at how many people had about you, we are aware of this before the six people came in. So if, for instance, you, because we're doing proactive marketing, if, for instance, you found out that you sent out 300 letters for six people to come into that training, what does it tell you? It tells you that for every 50 letter you sent out, you converted one person. For every 50 letter, you converted one person. That means if you want 12 persons to come in to your organization, you are going to send in 300 plus 300, making it 600 letters. And you will see six people coming into your organization. So uh, from, you see 12 people coming to your organization. Then if you want 18 people to come in, I'm going to send 300 plus 300 plus 300, making it what? 900 letters that will bring in 18 people. Because when 50 people are aware, you found out that the average, your average conversion is 50 is to one. So yeah, when 50 people become aware, one person converts. So that helps you to know how to push your product 
the more people are aware, the more the people who are going to be interested will be. So you see, like the funnel, the people who are going to be interested are going to be lesser than the people who are aware. So when people become interested, it is now awareness belongs, awareness belongs to the realm of marketing. Now, when people have developed interest, sales or selling should kick in. So when people have had you on the radio or anywhere or saw you or whatever, and now they start calling, yes? So have a way of now putting them where you can follow up, you can go to them, you can talk to them, you can remind them, you can send them mails and all those, yes? Probably you got this training uh, through getting any of my emails. I didn't put it there on my own is because you had opted in somewhere on Facebook or radio or on television or my website, you know, whatever, however you've opted in into our mailing list. That's why we are reaching out to you. So when you've created awareness, now that is what marketing, then a level of interest selling and sales should kick in. You follow up and follow up and follow up. Because this person is just interested, he may still have a lot of questions he needs answers to, then that's where you answer those questions. And then the person will now make a decision. Even when the person has made a decision, you must make sure that the decision the person is making will favor you. And that's why you won't give up until the person takes action that favors you. And that action is buying, because until they buy, no work done. Effort is not enough. Result is more important than effort when it comes to marketing and sell. Okay? So when the person has bought, 99.9% .9 of us will do what? We'll leave the person out. We don't get in contact with the person anymore. We don't check on the person anymore. So the person cannot come. The arrow squared or arrow two. Now, the first arrow means repeat. The person can come for repeat business. If somebody, how, do, how does somebody come for repeat business? Yeah. If what you are selling is one of them, yes, you can have some other components of, of what the person may always need. If somebody had bought clothes from you or, or dresses, the person may have need of what? Of, you know, jewelries, of eyeglasses, of rings, and um, maybe shoes so what do you need to do what you need to do is to be able to have a process of optimizing this person who is already customer because when somebody has bought from you the person is most likely to buy again and buy again and buy again so you must understand that so when the person had bought from you the customer try to make the person a repeat customer check him out find out what is um happening to him or her put him or her in a platform where you can reach out yes it could be blasting emails it could be calls it could be um, offering discounts it could be alumni um you know whatever okay so when you've been able to do that the next thing is you need to ask for referral so the second r is referral it will be very difficult for you to convince my wife to come and buy something from you, but it may be easier from, for me if I bought something from you and I've tested it, and now I can tell her, oh, they are the best when it comes to pizza. They are the best when it comes to ice cream. They are the best when it comes to you know, sales training. They are the best when it comes to this and that. She will not be able to buy without any hesitation because she knows I wouldn't want the wrong thing for her. I wouldn't just sell her for anything because what should I gain? Uh, you know, uh, have her interest, uh, you know, uppermost in my, my mind. So to that extent, yeah, she's the person, um, I'm the person to lose if I, if I refer to a wrong place. So she will believe me more than she will believe you. So that is that, Ida plus R square. Awareness, interest, decision, action plus, repeats buying and referral. If you got that, yes, 
Let's sip water and come back. And now we talk about customer satisfaction. And then we talk about Dr. Kali Cousins secret code. So thank you for coming up to this point with me. Good. Thank you very much.